hello everyone welcome back to another video peace of christ be unto you all and today we will be looking at uh, was paul antichrist did he preach a different message than jesus and the apostles so many persons critique paul for preaching a different message than that which jesus and the other apostles preach is this true Let's take a dive into the scriptures and we will see whether the critics are lying or they're making up false accusations against Paul or if he is really preaching a different message. So the question is, did Paul ever meet with Jesus? Yes, he did. He met Jesus on the road to Damascus about to persecute the church. Um, I spoke with a, criti a critic who is against Paul and she said that he saw satan and she didn't saw jesus so this is a very bold and dangerous claim to make because you have to have proof the only proof she has is basing it off her own skepticism and no reference from scriptures the only thing she does is take scriptures pulling them together to make them say what she wants them to say to make a conclusion that because satan comes as an angel of light which Paul spoke of that he saw Satan and that Jesus didn't blind anyone. Is this true? Did anyone saw the glorified Christ and was not able to stand before? Yes, John did. And we can look at this because the, we have to ask the question now, does the, his appearance matches that which Paul saw when he encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus? The answer is yes. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 16 to 17 and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the Sun shine in his strength so Jesus is as the Sun shine in his strength so did definitely this is a bright light which Paul obviously saw verse 17 and when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead so john seen jesus the glorified jesus falling down at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me fear not i am the first and the last and we can look at the day encounter which paul had acts chapter 9 verse 3 to 4 as he journeyed he came near damascus and suddenly there shine round about him a light from heaven so there is a light and John saw a light, brightness as full as the sun, and he fell to the earth. John definitely did fell as dead. And he heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecute me? We can see clearly that to look on him in his, glo in his glory, it is hard to stand, and looking unto the sun alone can blind anyone. We can also look at Moses. He had an encounter like this with God. Exodus chapter 33 verse 20 and he said you can not see my face for they shall no man see me and live so now I guess her conclusion to this will be that Moses didn't see God but she, he saw Satan because he will die if he see God for only Satan such things will happen too as she claimed these claims are silly and shows that they have no knowledge of what they are talking about and just making things up as they feel like to conclude that Paul definitely met Jesus as the appearance match with John and the descriptions are the same and even if you go to Moses the encounter which he had with God it's the same so now the question is did Paul's message contradict Jesus's message and the message of the disciple the answer is no. Paul taught the same message as they taught and quoted vehemently from the Old Testament to confirm the things which Jesus fulfilled in the law. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. Jesus came to fulfill everything that was written in the law and we can see in Jeremiah that God will make a new covenant through Jesus Christ. In Jeremiah 31 
verse 31 to 34, we can see here, Behold, the day is come, saith the Lord, and I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, although I was an husband unto them, said the Lord, but for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. So we can see here that there is a new covenant that God said he will make and Jesus fulfilled the law and he made that new covenant. In Matthew chapter 26 verse 28, Jesus said, For this is my blood of the new covenant, the new testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So this is definitely all connecting. That is the same message that Jesus is teaching, the same message Paul is teaching. So these false claims have no backings, but to take verses and misrepresent them, pulling them out of context. For example, this is one of the ignorant claims of her. She said that because Ananias was the one who lied to the Holy Spirit, that she doesn't believe him when he spoke about Paul. But that is a different Ananias, showing that she is very ignorant of the scriptures. And this is what they do. They take things out of context, having no knowledge of what they're speaking about. That Ananias died before Paul's conversion. Very ignorant claim to prove that Paul is Antichrist because she's trying to say Ananias, a liar, is the one who spoke about Paul. Which is not true. It's another Ananias, another disciple, which prayed for Paul. Another question to ask is, did any other disciples approve and spoke of Paul? The answer again is yes, but they would say no. But let's look what the, let's look at what Scripture says, not our opinions. Luke, the author of Acts, and Peter, along with the other disciples, called him a beloved brother. This is not something you would expect someone who is supposedly an antichrist would be called. You wouldn't call him your brother, Peter, affirm Paul, and call him his brother. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 to 17. And on account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction you therefore beloved seeing you know these things before beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness so we can see that Peter did confirm that wisdom was given to him and that many of them reveal deep things and many ignorant persons twist his words as they do also with other scriptures unto their own destruction. So her point was now, she said that verse 17, she's thinking that she has a point that Peter is speaking about Paul when Peter is speaking about persons like her who twist the scripture and warning others to beware those false and wicked teachers. But those who take Paul's word along with the other scripture and twist it, they are the one that's wicked and leading people into error, just like she is preaching a different message and say that Paul is Antichrist. We can see that the very apostle of Jesus who was with him approved of Paul's letter and consider him as a brother. Throughout the early church, they all approved of Paul's letter and had nothing against him. Only the ignorance, as Peter spoke about, twisted his words. We can now see where these false doctrines started out from. When being asked to have a discussion, so everyone could see she ran away by making excuses and couldn't back up her claims, just as every other false teacher does. So we can see how they twist and take things out of context 
as usual you don't need to make up truth the truth is already the truth but the lies you have to make up lie and cover for another and the truth expose those lies this is why they are afraid of having a discussion just like the muslims also attack paul but they have no evidence which shows that his message is contrary to christ even their own books prove them wrong and ignorant paul was mentioned to be one of the apostles in surah 36 verse 14 when we sent to them two apostles they impugned both of them then we reinforced them with a third and they said we have indeed been sent to you so we look at the interpretation of ibn kathir it shows us that the apostle is bulos which is paul tafsir ibn kathir surah 36 14 when we sent to them two messengers they denied them both means they hasten to disbelief in them so we reinforce so we reinforce them with a third means we supported them and strengthened them with a third messenger ibn juraj narrated from wab bin suleiman from shuab al jabai the names of the first two messengers were shamon which is simon and johannan which is john and the name of the third is bulas which is paul and the city was antioch we can see how their own book is against their claims and is in support of paul both the bible and the quran are saying paul was an apostle of jesus christ paul spoke against the quran just like jesus forewarned us many false prophets will come to deceive matthew chapter 24 verse 11 and many false prophets shall rise and deceive many so we know that many will come to deceive just like muhammad deceive and come with a different message paul taught us not to believe anyone who brings another gospel which we have received Galatians chapter 1 verse 18 But though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed if we take this verse which Paul is speaking about we would have certainly refused him if he brought another gospel to us as with the other disciples but like we saw Peter and the rest affirm Paul's letter and call him one of their own brother in the faith he met jesus and was given wisdom to write scriptures and to deliver the message of christ this is not something strange or new jesus told us those who believe in the lies will hate those who speaks the truth they hate on paul and they refuse to take teachings and remaining in sound doctrine when the evidence are being shown to those who lie they make up a bunch of excuses not to speak anymore or get angry or goes into their emotion rather than rational thinking and showing references of what they believe whether it is true or false so we can clearly see that paul was affirmed to be given the authority of jesus to teach and write scriptures which is in alignment with the teaching of jesus and the rest of the apostle as usual they are afraid to come and have a discussion but the truth will always prevail and the truth will always set you free